Welcome back to the Med Mamas. Today, I'm very happy to introduce Bejui Sirikyan Kukudian, and she is going to share her grandmother with us, her Med Mama, Maning Halajian. Welcome, Bejui. Thank you. What is your first memory of your Med Mama? She's always quiet and uh, do everything for us. You know, we're nine of us. She was so sweet. She'd sit next to you. Whatever we're eating, she'd take her part and move it to my plate. In the word time, we didn't have much to eat. Right. So, yeah, even uh, the crumbs on the table were cleaning up. Um, and that, that was 1940, 40, 40, 1938, 40. I was five years old, six maybe. Um so that's why I remember the most. And then I remember we were uh, in the backyard. We had a little room all the, we put all those uh, leftover stuff, you know, and then she's there sitting on a little bench and then uh, looking for the pieces that we might need and she put it away. Uh, that's the, the the thing. Everybody, all my sister and brothers remember that, that she was, she was it was a favorite uh-huh. corner. Tell us where your Met Mama's family is from. Essenga. My mom is uh, born too. You know what? And my uh, my grandfather, her husband, uh, died of a genocide. <clears throat> 1915. Her her name is Mary Halajian, but she was Avidikian. My grandfather's name is Sahag. And, uh, I have a letter here. I'm going to read it to you because my older sister um, read it to me. Uh, some time ago. Okay, it, it says, in 1914 to 1918, there was the massacre. A million and a half died. My aunt was the, the sister of my father, and her husband, Uncle Sulian, my, my uh, grandpa, Sahak, got killed in the massacre. Uh, right. Well, uh, they went to Istanbul. My aunt and my grandma, they, they knew each other from the uh, Erzenga. They want to leave there. They want to get away from there. So they put, uh, it, my sister says over here, they put a, a veil like uh, on their face. They won't recognize. So they put a disguise on. Yeah, disguise on, yes. Mm-hmm. 1920, I think it is. Then they all went to, to France and Marseille. So my uncle... Um, when they came to France, my uncle got a <coughs> piece of land, mm-hmm. and um, he, he built a house. Did your Met Mama um, live close or far away? She lives. She lives with us all the time. She uh, so she from, had only my mm-hmm. mom uh, because her second daughter died of pneumonia in uh, our country in uh, Erzinga. I see. Yeah, she died she was 12 years old. What were some of her favorite pastimes? Well, uh, she, she would like to, like, uh, uh, like all the Armenians cooking, of course. Mm-hmm. And uh, her, she was a uh, nurse. And then she, she helped uh, the sick at, um, at the genocide. She did, and friends too. She was uh, doing some shot. The neighbors, they trust her. I, I don't see. remember if she had a permit, but she was doing it. Every time she, uh, somebody gets sick and needs it, she, she will go and do the shot. And how how old was she when, um, at the time of the genocide? Do you know about how old she oh was? Oh, my God. My, my, my mom was uh, 12 years old. She was born in 19, 1906. And what's your mom's name? Zabel. Zabel. And your mom had how many children? Nine. My dad's name was Katair. What about all of your siblings' names? Oh, yeah. Uh, Oannes. Okay. It, it, it is Jean in French, Jean. The mm-hmm. G-E-N-A. Mm-hmm. Uh, Annique. And in French, it's Annie. Uh, Bartanouche. Mm-hmm. Jacqueline in French. 
And then it's, it's me, Bedjui. <laughs> and then you, yeah? Yes. And you know what? Uh, I don't know if I told you, they used uh, the neighbors used to call us by number. number. They couldn't remember the names. I was number four <laughs> <laughs> from the top. <laughs> oh, brother. And yeah. then, um, so at home they call you Bejui, and did they call you Bejui at school or Juliet? Oh, no, Juliet, at French, French school, you know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And my brother Raymond Sahak, my sister, uh, oh, no, no. And three sisters, no, yes, yes, yes. And my sister Rosette, the sixth. Okay. Right? And Elise. Uh huh. And Henriette. Uh huh. And Murad. Uh huh. Voila. <laughs> voila. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, um, so you are right in the middle. You are a middle child. Yes. 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 My dad used to say, "You talk Armenian in the house. You talk French outside, but Armenian yes. at home." So that's why all, all of us we talk Armenian very well. Beautiful. Yeah, I love that. And what what was life like um, in Marseille when growing up? Well, growing up, it was, uh, I remember the war. I, I remember when the American came to help uh, 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 French, France. And then the, the, where I live, we, we didn't have the chance to go all the way, but they, they built some apartment now. There used to be bunkers mm-hmm. all, way, all on top of the hill. And the, the, the German built some uh, bunkers. They were hiding there. I see. Jeez. Uh, I mean, I can hear the, the bombs going over my head, and I was crying. I remember my younger sister with me. I started crying because I couldn't lift her. She was two years old. And my mom came in, and right away we went to my uncle next door here, uh, uh, like a basement, you know, but they didn't use it for But just we hide there. Father, he died in um, 1951. He was 47 years old. And he That's died of so aneurysm. Oh. That's and, so sorry uh, to hear that. Yeah. That's he sad. He was worried. He was worried. worried. He didn't have enough food to put on the table. I know. I... It was, that's the way it was. Because it was just uh, sitting, keep sitting, that thinking that we're going to have more. But there wasn't any more. There were little crumbs. We eat in the crumbs on the table. Wow. Yeah. I I think um, it's an important to hear um, this part of your story. Um, yes. The people understand what it means to, you know, yes, the, we didn't the stop struggle, struggle that you face. You're a grandmother yourself and a great grandmother. So yes. I would like. I would like to ask you some questions okay. uh, uh, about your parents um, and about your childhood, maybe some of the games you played. Oh, um, you know what? My dad uh, played oud. <laughs> okay, my dad was playing and uh, dancing and, sang, and uh, singing in front of him. And mm-hmm. all the neighborhood would stop and look because we were uh, nine of us. And uh, we uh, we always happy. My dad after he, after he come from work, he was a construction worker, and mm-hmm. he would play oud and he would sing, and dance. Uh, and yeah, and what about a, and your mom? What would she, what would she do? What was she like? Oh, she was always washing everything by hand at that time, cooking and uh, washing and cleaning. Uh, I had a she had a uh, in an orphanage. And uh, an and orphanage Greek in Erzinga. Uh-huh. She met, uh, there they were this lady, she says, Your mom, she's so clean, you can eat on the, on the floor. And we were nine <laughs> of us. Yeah. That's why uh-huh. I remember she told, she told us that your mom is so fussy, you know, that you can eat on, on the floor. <laughs> it's so clean. <laughs> and and that's how, uh, thank God we learn everything from her. She was. Special. My mom says the girls should know how to sew a button. So we all 
knew how to sew. Yeah. And then what? One time we were having a problem, money, and then uh, we all work at at home. Doing some, and then my uh, remember one of my sisters. Now she's back to France because her husband retired, and she's back in France now. And she's the one who deliver. I know my but my brothers knew how to do shoes in the neighborhood. There was a lot of uh, uh, people in the neighborhood. It was oh my gosh. Uh, pastry shop, all kind of uh, shop they had. Uh, like uh, even for grocery, uh, the small shop, you know. Even yeah. uh, my mama remember she used to make charek, but she didn't have any uh, stove. So they brought, after the the baker do the bread, the French bread, uh, they all go cook their uh, charek. Oh, they would take their chudag, um dough to the baker and have it. Yeah, there. they would. They would make it. You know, they would make the the, the design on the. You know, uh, yeah, like grade you, it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And then they were at that at that time, and especially on the holidays, in the air you smell chudag. <laughs> yeah. I just remember that. Uh, um, the way I came to America. Did you want to know that? I would love to know that. <laughs> there was a lot of Armenian from Gampeng. They were in Detroit. One day, the, the girl um, who she married my husband's cousin, Michelle, Michelle's cousin, uh, if you want to go to France, I arrange it. So that's what happened. I see. And I remember seeing him in his... In his uh, my husband's cousin's house uh, once, you know, I remember seeing him there. So we started, uh, about two years, we started um, riding each other, and uh, he came to France and got married in 1958. Wow. And yeah. then you, you, you uh, did you stay in France for a little while, or you went right back? Yes, but he had to do some paperwork to bring me here. I see. Yeah. What was your first language? Yeah. Armenian, right? Yeah. Oh, yes. My dad used to say, you you speak Armenian uh, inside the house, and you go out, you can take French. Now, <laughs> every every one of us, we know Armenian. Now, he insisted, you know, you don't talk French, because they didn't know French that much. They just, uh, they, they were working, but uh, bonjour, au revoir, you know, this, uh, uh, and my mom, she, she was the one who most who knew. They became French citizens. Yes. Right. Yes. Both of them. Right. Yes. Yeah. I met you this past summer, and I was fortunate to meet you searching for my uh, own um, relatives of my my yes. own grandmother. But um, what what I really enjoyed was sitting and talking with you and your brother Murad, and then yes. you sh- showed us the church that your father built in 1929. And yes. uh, the, it wasn't the only yeah. one. It was his brother, uh, two brothers. I, I don't know the uh, the other one because he was like a little slow, you know. How was that different when you moved to uh, Michigan to Gross Point? I remember Saint Sarkis, it's called. Uh huh. So uh, we used to go to church, and then uh, there was a uh, Greek town. We used to go to eat there, all of us, with my nephew, my my brother, my sister-in-law. We were about 20 of us, yeah. Greek food, it's almost like Armenian food. So we used to go there after church, yes. How nice. So now your your daughter speaks Armenian, French, and English then, right? Well, they understand Armenian because my, my, uh, my, my mother-in-law lived with me for 35 years. Ah. So they were talking Armenian with her. They remember, but they don't talk anymore. I see. Yeah. With your own uh, children and grandchildren, and now you have great-grandchildren. Yes, uh, yes. What stories do you share with them? Grandchildren, I almost mm-hmm. raised them, raised them because I was working part-time, three days a week. I don't know if they, you have that big company of uh, clothing, Jacobson. It used to be, and then it was on, uh, not too far where my daughter's, youngest daughter, the beauty salon. It's mm-hmm. at the Gross Point. It's a nice neighborhood, very nice. That's where I work, on the uh, Simstress. 
My oldest daughter got two bo- two girls, and my youngest daughter two boys. Last week there was the, my youngest grandson. He came and cut my grass for the last time because it, it's a lot of leaves, and then and, and I think it's okay now. Yes. So he's doing that the job, but I I pay them, you know, maybe because they need money when they're young. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just like a yeah. So you you do a lot of cooking. Um, so are you passing down some uh, family recipes? You know, lemon June. Mhm. Mhm. Yep. Tasty. I make I make that too. Yeah, and they, they want to come and learn how to do it too. <laughs> so I'm gonna have one in the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna have a lot of people here. <laughs> nice. I love that. That's that's uh that's a great thing to share. I mean, they'll they'll appreciate it and. It, there's nothing like sharing something for, um, you know, filling filling the belly and filling the soul, and, and it's a tradition. Yes, that, and I'm, you know, I'm doing, yeah. since I know how to sew, I, I volunteer for a, um, I'm with mother. They need some blanket, and I have a big, powerful machine downstairs in my basement. So I do, they, they give me, the, somebody brought, bring it to me. And I do it, and I do some bibs. I have to cut it myself and uh, do it. So that's why I'm passing my time if I don't cook. What are your hopes for your loved ones? They know we're nine of us. You know, I don't think they know much. So I think I'm going to start talking to them. <laughs> Telling them about your, yeah. Well, about about, about my grandma and my mom, yeah. Like talking to you now, it it make me, uh, I want to, f- even if they want to listen, they don't want to listen, I'm going to tell them the story. So I'm going to read it to them, this letter that my daughter, my sister, older sister got me uh, years ago. If you could go back to a moment uh, with your meds, with your meds mama, what, what moment would you go back to? She would sit next to me and uh, feed me, <laughs> pushing a piece of bread. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the yes, yeah. yeah. We had a very good time. And we were loved so much each other. Yeah. Yeah. What What would you say to her, uh, your um, med mama Manning if she were here? I would say I, I would love her forever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Edgy, this has been such a great conversation. I love learning about. Uh, your med mama Manning. I love learning about your family. Uh, you as thank a you. grandmother. Yes. Thanks so much. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.